87,000 who left the keys in their vehicle and had it stolen, a 22% increase in just a year. Old habits die hard, and thieves can't help themselves, especially when it's so easy. So why is it so difficult for some people to turn off the car, take the key or the fob, and lock it up before they walk away? Turn off the ignition and lock your vehicle every time you get out. Don't leave keys or fobs inside. Put all valuables out of sight in the trunk or take them with you. Lock it before you leave it. Don't make it easy for the thief. If you know something about vehicle theft or insurance fraud, call us at 1-800-TEL-NICB. That's 1-800-TEL-NICB. A public service message from the National Insurance Crime Bureau. It only takes a minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. And you can do it at doihaveprediabetes.org. But you're probably not going to. Nope. I'm sure you've got a perfectly good excuse. Kids, work. <laughs> I get it. You're busy. So what better time than now? Let's begin. Raise one finger if you're a man. Ladies, none yet. Oh, count in your head if you're driving. Now, three more fingers for everyone over 60, two over 50, one over 40, one more if you're not physically active, another finger if anyone in your family has type 2 diabetes, another if you've got high blood pressure, if you're overweight, raise another finger, two if you're very overweight, and three if you're really overweight. You've just taken the world's first audio pre-diabetes test. And if you're holding up five or more fingers, visit doihaveprediabetes.org or talk to your doctor. There's no excuse because prediabetes can be reversed. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. Welcome to the new John Simmons Show. After years of battling a gambling addiction, John found a hope and a future for his life through Christ. He has spent the last several years encouraging others to find joy peace and hope in their lives by walking out God's plan for their lives. Now, John wants to help you find the passion, vision, and faith you need to start writing out God's sentence for your life and help you add to it every day. Four lines are now open. Call or text 314-880-0808. Now, here is your host, the new John Simmons. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Hey, everybody, welcome. It's the new John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network, where you can find God's sentence for your life and become the new you where we talk about finding passion, vision, and faith in your walk with Christ so that your life can overflow with joy, peace, and hope today. Welcome to the program, everybody. As always, we're streaming live on Facebook. If you're over there to search for the new John Simmons Show, as well as being on your radio and on your home devices, very excited to have today's guest inside the studio with us at Definitely Holly is an aspiring radio and podcast host. She's also a motivational writer and speaker, and of course, a Jesus lover. We love to have people like that on our show. Uh, Holly, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. I'm very excited to have someone who's passionate about <laughs> Jesus and is all over social media, just sharing their heart for the Lord. And and not only that, but all of your, your intricate uh, desires to see people have God in their lives. And so this is a, an exciting time for us to have you on the show. Uh, before we get into sort of the questions about your life, I want people to know that if you have questions or comments, and you want to talk to Holly, you have the ability to do so. The text line is 314-880-0808, or as well, you can get on the Facebook live stream and just comment your questions. We can share them live on the air. You can find her at Definitely Holly on Facebook, and I'm sure Instagram and yes, some other Instagram things. Instagram as well. So uh, <laughs> we're going to talk to her tonight on a couple different uh, subjects. So you're going to stay tuned. We'll talk about some gun stuff later. We're going to talk about inspiring others later. We have a a full set of questions. You're going to be under the fire here. Uh oh, like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> All right, good, good. So Holly, so you're here on the New John Simmons Show. We like to encourage people to find God's plan for their life, and you found your way here. Tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Okay, well, let's see where where do I even start? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. So uh, let's see. College. I graduated from uh, Lindenwood University. Okay, I've local girl. Yes. Of course, St. Uh, St. Charles, Missouri. I've always known that, you know, I wanted to be a either a writer or a journalist. 
that yeah. has always been in my background. I was that little girl in the mall with my mom, and this is kind of embarrassing, but I would be that little girl, you know, waiting in line for Santa, and I would be literally, I would have an actual little notebook, and I still remember yeah. this, and my mom still makes fun of me for this. And they'd be like, oh, wow, Santa's wearing these shoes, and he looks like this, and wow. I just, <laughs> I, I was that girl, you know, I was, I don't know, like two, three years old, I'd be sitting on my couch, I'd be reading books, blah, 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 blah. you know, yeah. I just I always had an interest in reading and writing and just, you know, I've, I've always been outgoing. And so I uh, graduated from Linwood with my bachelor's in uh, broadcast journalism. Wow. Can I stop you for a second? Because this is, so, <laughs> people will miss this if you don't point it out, I yeah. think. And so what uh, you're explaining here, and we talk about this on the show all the time, those of you who listen regularly that God has a plan and a purpose for your life, and he's given you gifts in order to fulfill that purpose. Now, we don't yes. have to go find it. We don't have to fulfill it, but he does have one for us. Right. And for all of us, it says that the Bible says that all of us have been given gifts that are irrevocable, yes. okay, and that our gifts manifest whether we realize we need to use them for the Lord or not. Mm -hmm. And so what you've done from a very early age is God's put inside you this desire to sort of ask questions right. and notice things and write them down and exactly. take notes, you know, when other people are like, I want to go play in the fountain at the mall instead of take the notes about what the, you know, the people's <laughs> shoes are wearing and stuff like that. So, uh, you, but you, you take this love of sort of seeing things and you take it to school and you get a degree in these things. And, Absolutely. and so what is your plan in this process? What are you hoping to do with this degree and things? Okay. So, uh, I did use my degree already. I was a, I am a former news reporter, uh, Clarksville, Tennessee. I was a breaking news reporter. So I have used it, but, uh, my, my main plan and my goals are to, you know, take all these passions and gifts that God has given me and use it to not only inspire and motivate others, but just to lead my own path and not to follow in others, but in other people's footsteps, make my own path. I think that's great because most people think that they look at the lives of other people and they're like, well, I want what he has. Exactly. I want to do what they're doing. And, and God's made us so uniquely. Exactly. You know, we talk about the being the member of the body of the Christ. If everybody's an arm, our body's going to look pretty stupid, right? <laughs> you know, God's created us each to be a different part of the body. That's, right. what, that's what you're describing. And so exactly. And I think, you know, we're all we're all going in the same direction, but we're all going to be taking our individual unique paths along the same direction. And, you know, some of us may be further ahead than others. Some of us may be a little bit behind, but that's okay because each of us has that own path. Yeah. So it's, it's exciting for me because having a show like this where you have people who are wondering what God has for them and you bring somebody in like definitely Holly, who, you know, from a very early age has realized that God's given her something. So how did you even find out that it was from God or did it take you a long time or did you know early on? Ah, uh, well, I've, I've kind of known early on, I was, I was, I'm blessed to have two really good parents. Um, I do come from a divorced family, but with that being said, I do have two wonderful parents. My mom and dad both really pushed, uh, you know, faith, believing in God. And my dad was the one that, you know, always made sure we go to church on Sunday. We, we go together as a family, you know, on that same note, you know, before we pray, we would pray before we eat dinner, we would pray before we go to bed. So I've really, uh, learn those values and morals along my way. Do you remember the time in your life where Christ showed up and you felt his love and forgiveness? Absolutely. I remember, you know, like I've said early on, I've, I've always, I've always believed in God, but there came a point in my life where I was going through some really hard things and like, you know, everyone else does. Sure. Uh, but you know, I kind of fell away from God for a bit, uh, going into college, you know, starting, uh, my freshman year, my undergraduate and I kind of, you know, I stopped believing in God and I was just, I was really confused, right. but, uh, I became friends with my good friend, Natasha, who I'm still friends with today. And she introduced me to faith church in uh, her city. So she took me there and it was my first time being back in church in a while. Yeah. And so, you know, I just, I fell in love with faith church. And so I just started going with her. I made other friends there, I met new people. And so that just really sparked. I felt like I finally found a place where I belong. And I don't, I don't go to faith church anymore. I'll mm -hmm. go from time to time, but I do go to Calvary church out in St. Charles, mm -hmm. Missouri. Mm -hmm. And I love it. And it's just, I just love that non-dominational feel. You know, you just go in, you worship and you're around like-minded people. Yeah. We shared this sort of this analogy on the show last night. If you caught it, this idea that being around other believers is like being a log on a fire. 
you know, the the more believers that are near each other, the bigger the fire, the bigger the blaze, the more you're able to do and the hotter you're able to burn. But if you take one log off the fire, it goes out, you know, and for us and what you're sort of describing is this idea that you got around other like minded people. Exactly. For me, you know, dealing with being born again at 29 and being surrounded by a bunch of non-believers, you know, they tried to extinguish my flame for Christ early on in my life. Exactly. And so for you, when you got around these other believers, what were they encouraging you to do as far as your faith walk and, you know, what you might do from being a college age student who was not, you know, necessarily looking after what Christ wanted to, them to do. And now you're getting around believers who are trying to, you know, encourage you. So what does that look like? Sure. I mean, it was, it was just great. You know, it got me back into going to church every Sunday where, when, you know, I pretty much fell off that bandwagon and, you know, I hadn't been to church in a while and it got me just back in that spiritual thinking and just back in that right mindset. Yeah, I've always had, you know, a right mindset, but you know what I mean? Sure. Just getting back in that spiritual mindset of things. And so that just really helped just being around, you know, just being more around uh, positive people too. That yeah. really helped. Yeah. So when you're around them and you're, so you're, you're, you're taking in some new experiences yes. and we've already shared with the listening audience. Again, we have at definitely Holly yes. here with us in the studio tonight talking about her faith and her Christ walk. And we'll get into some other conversations later on. So you started writing these things down. It's one of the things that you like to do is be a motivational writer. Yes. And so did that experience uh, inside the new church and inside, you know, the lives of these other believers that are surrounding you, is this helping influence your writing or were you doing that beforehand? I was kind of doing that beforehand too, but once I got back into church and once I got not even just back into church, just back to, you know, reading the Bible and back to just really praying and being in God's presence, yeah. that really fueled my writing because it got that passion back into my life. Because you, you've already shared, you're writing from a little age, you're describing <laughs> everything. So I'm sure it was sort of, you know, part of your gifting to be able to translate, uh, you know, what you're seeing onto the written word. And so uh, tell some people how they can okay. see some of your writings. Okay, well, great. You can go to uh, definitelyholly.wordpress.com, mm -hmm. and you can also check out uh, you can check out me definitely Holly on Facebook. You can also go to my Instagram as well. Okay, what are some of the things you like to write about? Oh gosh, uh, let's see. So I love to write about you know God and faith, uh, different motivational topics. Yeah, you know just finding your passion and just keep, you know, struggling until you find success. And mm -hmm. that's where I'm at right now. You know, I'm still in that, in that struggle stage, but at the same time, I think that no matter what stage you're in in life, we're still going to experience that struggle. Yeah. You're talking about a struggle stage, but you've already shared that, you know, you were a news reporter <laughs> and these other things and people would say, well, that's not really struggling. And that's, <laughs> that's sort of, you know, making something of your gifting. So Tell me why you think now you're in a different place than you were then. Uh, well, I'm just at this place now where I have a full-time job. It, it's not exactly what I want to do. And mm -hmm. I, I don't think that that's what God has actually called me to do. But I think he's put this in my path, my full-time job, because this is what he has until something bigger and better comes along. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that I am going to, you know, he, God wants me to have my own podcast and show the definitely Holly show, you know, I've really prayed about it and I've had different opportunities on different stations, but God has literally always stopped me and said, no, you need to wait, just be still because I have something. And I've always felt that. It sounds like you've been driven from a very early age, <laughs> but I like something you just brought up is that you don't think you, it's what God called you to do. Mm -hmm. This is something we talk about so frequently on the show that God's calling on all of our hearts to use all of our gifts to serve the kingdom and also to serve others. Mm -hmm. And so for you, you know, why do you think God's called you to do something? Uh, call me to do anything like why I, I want to start from that perspective, like, because some people don't know that God has a plan for their life. So when did right. you realize, you know, that he had a specific plan for you? Um, I'd have to say probably in college, just yeah. going through uh, my journalism courses and figuring out, you know, this is what I like to do. I like being, you know, in front of the camera. I like speaking to people. I'm a very outgoing people or people person. Yes. And, you know, I just, I love being able to put a smile on people's faces and I like being able to just be real and authentic and not fake and actually you know, motivate and inspire people without being this, this fake person, just being real. Yeah. So what do you think God's calling you into? You've sort of mentioned the podcast, the radio field. So tell uh -huh. us a little bit about like, what's your vision? My vision is to have uh, my own show, the definitely Holly show. 
And I do have a book in the works. Yes. I keep getting distracted from it, but That's another feeling. <laughs> so busy. But um, yeah, so um, I'm still putting things together. Um, I have been taking notes and I have kind of been preparing for my book, but it's just a matter of, you know, going back and, you know, really writing and getting back into that, that groove. Do you, so, as somebody who hosts a show and also has written a book, and I understand sort of the draw to do both. Do you feel that in your life it is more exciting to write or to talk on the radio or the podcast and stuff like that? Oh, man. See, that's hard for me because both those things are my passion. You know, some people, I, I don't get it because in, in my life, it's like I love being in front of the camera. I love speaking. I, I love being on air. And some people, you know, they're like, oh, gosh, it's so scary. How do you do that? And I'm right, just right. like, oh, man, I just get so fueled up by that. <laughs> like. Yeah, it's exciting to, <laughs> to know that, you you know, both of these things can really draw on our hearts. Yeah. You know, and for you to be able to express yourself like this. And what are you hoping to encourage other people to do through either your writing or through the sure. radio? So I, you know, a number of different things. I hope I encourage people to find their own unique path and pursue their goals and dreams. And, you know, don't let anyone stop you. If people are saying you can't do it, don't listen to them. Keep Keep praying about different things, you know. Pray to God and continue continue with your goals and your dreams until you pursue them. And don't don't ever give up. Keep going. And so you're having to walk that out a little bit right now. Yeah. Yeah. You said you're in the struggle season and you have to keep going, Ex keep pushing on. Exactly. And it's hard because you know you run into roadblocks and you're like, oh, like why am I at this job or is this really what I'm where I'm supposed to be at? And mm -hmm. things don't always make sense. But that's the whole thing with faith in God. You know, things are not going to make sense, but that's the way things work and you have to have that faith and that's all about having that faith. <laughs> yeah. Faith is about the, un, you know, the expectation of the unknown future. You exactly. know, when God, when God called me into ministry, it's not a seat I would have picked for myself. It's not like, Hey, I'd really like to be a, a guy who talks about Jesus on the radio. Everybody loves talking about Jesus. I'm obviously going to be widely accepted wherever I go. You know, no one gets an icky feeling when Jesus gets brought up <laughs> in front of, you know, secular people, of course not. And so for me, I want to be able to, uh, you know, use what God's given me to the best of my ability, but it realizes that you have to use uh, it in the way that God intended it, yes. you know, and for someone like you who can really encourage people to know that, you know, you keep pushing ahead, that even if it doesn't feel right, yes. you know, it doesn't mean that it's not right. And also this idea of faith and the expectation that even though it may not be what I think it needs to be, God's plan is so much greater. Exactly. Just because we don't under understand things, you know, God knows what he's doing. Uh, some comments here on Facebook says, uh, <laughs> Dave says, I could definitely see Holly doing motivational speaking or, <laughs> or doing a radio show. She's very oh. <laughs> energetic and has a great personality and a great faith in God. Thanks, Dave, for chiming in today. This has uh, uh, been an exciting time. There's so much more. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so much more to get to. Obviously, people are like hearing you on the show tonight. So uh, when we come back, we're going to have more conversation with Definitely Holly. Go check her out at Definitely Holly on Facebook and the like. Uh, we're going to get into some conversation about guns and Jesus and inspiring others. There's lots of stuff to talk about. Don't go away. You're listening to the new John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network. Faithfully Fit and Wellness is St. Louis's all-new faith-based fitness program. Not only does Faithfully Fit want to see you shed pounds, but also wants to see you shed any other weight you've been carrying through Christ. Classes are filling up every morning during the week, so grab your spot in an individual class or an eight-week boot camp. Faithfully Fit offers classes in circuit training, drumstick fusion, cardio, and strength and personal training. Classes start at just 5 bucks, and the eight-week boot camp starts at 75 but wait, as a listener of the new John Simmons show, Faithfully Fit is offering you a buy one, get one free boot camp when you mention this ad when signing up. That's two camps for the price of one. You can bring a friend, split the cost, or have your second camp for free. Either way, this is a special offer only for show listeners. Sign up today by calling 314-239-4149 or visit faithfully.fit for more information. Faithfully Fit can also hold classes at your church or school. Don't delay contact Faithfully Fit where they hope to strengthen your body and your relationship with Christ. Call 314-239-4149. Testimony House Ministries is the proud sponsor of the new John Simmons Show. We are so thankful for all of you who tune into the show, watch us live on Facebook or on our YouTube channel. Without all of you, the new John Simmons Show and all the other Testimony House Network shows would not be possible. Please visit newjohnsimmons.com today and click the Partner With Us tab to help us continue sharing our message of the future 
and a hope through Christ with others. God bless. Hey, everybody. New John Simmons here with you. Back in 2012, I found myself at the end of my rope for what seemed like the hundredth time. I cried out to God and said, God, if you're real, I need you to show me a future and a hope for my life. What happened next changed my life forever. It took me out of my life where I was a gambling addict who had lost over $500,000. allowed me to begin a new life in Christ where I found more joy, peace, and hope than I ever knew existed. I share the stories, including where I blame God for my father's death and the call into ministry that I found in my first book called Finding Faith. I also share with you the answers to the questions that I was asking God about what is faith and how can I move mountains with it. Finding Faith has those stories and so much more. I absolutely believe it can encourage you to find faith in your life today. Finding Faith by me, the new John Simmons, is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble website, Walmart. You can also pick up a copy signed by me over at newjohnsimmons.com. Are you interested in learning more about finding God's sentence for your life? At newjohnsimmons.com, there are articles and videos describing how you can begin to write God's sentence for your life by finding passion, vision, and faith. In addition, newjohnsimmons.com has a variety of ways for you to be encouraged to continue writing God's sentence. As always, you can hear the show live weekdays at 9 p.m. Central Time by clicking the Listen Live button when you visit newjohnsimmons.com. WGNU, the talk of St. Louis, broadcasting on 920 AM and 106.9 FM. Welcome back to the show, everybody. New John Simmons with you here each and every night at 9. If you want to catch past episodes of the show, All you have to do is head over to the Google Play Store. You can also find us on iTunes. We're everywhere. Look for us on Alexa or your HomePod, wherever you're at uh, that plays podcasts. You can find episodes of the new John Simmons show, including tomorrow. You'll be able to hear tonight's show we are doing right now with Definitely Holly. Is that what people call you, Definitely Holly? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Your mom's like, Definitely Holly, time for dinner. (laughs) None of that? (laughs) Well, most people uh, that are really close to me, they, they call me by my nickname, which is Hall, H-O-L-L. But yes, everyone knows me for definitely Holly. (laughs) Definitely Holly. So how does this name come to be? Oh, gosh. So funny story. When I used to live in Clarksville, uh, Tennessee, after I was a news reporter, a couple years later, I went back just to visit friends. And I was uh, also looking for a job there as well. And I just, I had like ideas for my own personal brand, but I just didn't know what to do about it. And I just didn't have like that right fit and the right feel about it. And so I went to a restaurant one a restaurant one night with a good friend of mine, Joe Padula, who's also a radio host in uh, Clarksville, Tennessee. And he's so funny. He has this real thick uh, New York accent. He's like, oh, Halls. He's just like, <laughs> we, we got to find you something that, that just fits. And he goes, he, his, his uh, word that he has for the Joe Padula show is absolutely. So he's like, we got to find you something, something that will fit you. And he goes, definitely, definitely Holly. And I was like, I love it. So That's he it. actually kind of helped me think of that. So he's the one actually behind that. Uh, <laughs> speaking from a person's point of view who has trouble spelling, the definitely, I would have picked a, a word that was able to spell a little bit easier just Hall or something, but that's just me. Just Holly. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of wanted it to be like, what was a word that people will remember? Yes. Like absolutely, definitely. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think that fits good. Like definitely. Yeah, it's a definitely. Again, it's a, it's a <laughs> no pun intended. It is a great word to use to describe you because you're definitely uh, right here, right now, and you are, you know, you're in here. And one of the things you've done recently, just this past weekend, I yes. saw if you're over on Facebook again at definitely Holly is her Facebook, Facebook and, Instagram. and Instagram. Definitely Holly. And so if you're able to go follow her, uh, you'll see some pictures from this last weekend when you were down at the NRA convention or yes, conference or what NRA, they call it, down uh, in Dallas. Meetings. Yes, Dallas, Texas. And you are a card carrying NRA member, huh? <laughs> yes, I am. You describe yourself as a conservative 2A advocate. Tell us what that means. Okay, so I describe myself as, I, I guess I'm to my to me, I'm still considered a millennial. So I consider myself a conservative, gun-toting, um, conservative millennial who no. loves Jesus and walks the road less traveled. 
the much 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 <laughs> less traveled uh when you <laughs> when you put the word millennial uh not often associated with either one of those things you just described guns for sure not and uh christians maybe second of all right uh so for you you're you are on this tiny road uh what's it look like for you when you travel to a place like the nra and you are someone who sort of sticks out um well you know i did I did see people that are like-minded like myself who are in my age group. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, you know, I, I could see where you're saying I did kind of stick out. But I was surrounded by, oh gosh, 80,000 other NRA members. And so, you know, we for the most part, we all have this. We're all on our, our own unique path, but we all have this uh, common uh, ground of, you know, we're big into faith. We're big into standing up for what we believe in and just being around those people. It was just, it's so awesome. And just to make different connections while you're there too. And yeah, I don't know much about guns. I'll stay there. And because uh, for me, uh, I didn't have a gun growing up. We didn't have one in the house. And when I became an adult, I didn't know people who were shooting guns. You know, maybe I was in the Boy Scouts and we shot the rifle at the target every once in a while. Uh -huh. uh, for me, I don't have a opinion either left or right politically as far uh -huh. as the gun debate goes. So the reason I even bring up this conversation is not because I have a lot of knowledge in the area, but I think that's helpful for people like Christians who, and here's the thing that I would want to ask to you, maybe you have a better insight on this, is that why are guns and Christians so closely related in like the public image? I think it has to come back to uh, protecting family because mm -hmm. to me it's not you know, it's not the the target shooting and stuff like that. It's the self-defense. And if you want to defend yourself and your family with an AR-15 or you want to defend yourself with a 9mm Smith & Wesson M&P shield, which is what I have, I think you should be able to have that right to, to do so because that's in our Constitution. And, you know, I think we all have this common understanding, being a Christian, being a conservative, that you want to protect yourself and you want to protect your family. And I just think it comes back to that family and the morals and the values. And so you feel that guns is associated with this moral, yes. this moral high ground is that we need. Yes, this. yes. It's about protecting, again, family, going back to those core family values, because that's what's important. For me, uh, just to give a little a hindsight into my own life here, a little look back, uh, the only time I can really remember seeing a gun gun uh, was when someone pulled it out at a party. They were like, I just bought this new gun <laughs> and they brought it out in front of everybody and it was in a case. And they opened up the case and it didn't have bullets or anything. Okay. But I just remember being so nervous around that thing. Like, I was just like, why are you pulling this out <laughs> at a party? I'm okay with this not being anywhere near me. You know, uh, I don't have this experience. And so I don't know what it's like to have such comfortability around a firearm. You know, I see the police and they can come in. I used to work at the, you know, the restaurants and the police would come in and it's on their hip. And so you don't think much about that. But when some random person you know, whether it's in, random to me, it's a friend or whatever, but I don't know that you have a gun. I, my best friends could have a gun and I may never know it. Right. And so here we are trying to talk about it in today's culture where it's a very sensitive subject on both sides of it. And right. And here you are sitting on one very firm side of the aisle. I am. And even traveling to go be with 80,000 other people who yes. are on a very firm part of the aisle. So, you know, how would you sort of encourage the conversation? Because that's what I hate is that we get so divided in these things. Yes. You know, and so for the people who are just like, when no guns and, you know, like me is like, just take that thing away sometimes. Mm -hmm. What's your conversation to them that's encouraging? Okay. To me, it's, um, you know, I would not listen to what other people say. I would not listen to what the media says, especially the media, because what they say a lot of times, that's not facts. That's more so opinions or uneducated uh, guess about guns or uh, not even knowledge. And so I would say, you know, go out to a shooting range, you know, have those instructors there, have those people that work there, show you how to shoot those guns there. And then after you do that, I encourage people to go out and buy a gun and to get a conceal and carry and to actually go through gun safety courses, learn about the gun, get comfortable with the gun. I definitely encourage everyone to do that. Yeah. Were, were you com like, how old were you when you first got comfortable? Okay, so uh, I come from a very uh, gun-loving family and, okay. you know, hunting, mm -hmm. shooting. But it wasn't until I was about 21, 22 years old when I actually first started shooting. Because when I was growing up, I've always been very conservative. I've always, you know, been a supporter of the Second Amendment, of course. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't really have that personal interest in going out and shooting or owning a gun. I was like, eh, whatever. 
you know, so it wasn't until I was 21 or 22 when, you know, I graduated from college. Yeah. I moved off to Clarksville, Tennessee. I didn't know anyone. Here I am. You know, I have a gypsy spirit. So that's just what I'm going to do anyways. Like you I like to roam? I do. Okay. <laughs> I like to be in uh, be in situations that makes me uncomfortable because okay. that's that's what growth is. It makes you suited for faith, for sure. Yes, that <laughs> God never put you somewhere does. where you're going to be super comfortable. But you know, I you know, I'm four. I was four hours away from home, and so especially with traveling, going through Tennessee or not Tennessee, uh, Illinois, when mm -hmm. you lose cell phone service, you know, for a good hours sometimes, and it's just it's a really good thing to have. And so I thought about it. My mom highly encouraged it to buy a handgun, and I did. I got my conceal and carry, and I got a handgun, and I took classes on how to shoot that gun. I learned gun safety. I did a lot of research and it, it definitely practice using your weapon, practice dry firing, practice using that weapon, you know, outdoors, indoors, just you have to get comfortable with that, with that gun. Yeah. Cause you don't want mistakes to happen. You don't want injuries to take place or, or, or right. worse. That's how we see incidents like tragedies and things play, taking place because of the mishandling of these weapons. Sure. Uh, let's pivot a little bit and move into sort of a, a discussion about uh, your life in terms of how we can, share what God's done in you and through you and is going to do in your life to encourage our audience. So we'll start with this sort of discussion here on the show. We talk about passion, vision, and faith. Mm -hmm. Three things that we absolutely believe can help anybody find God's unique plan and purpose for their life. On this show, we call it finding God's sentence because in Hebrews 11, he writes down all the sentences of people who have done things in faith, whether it's Abraham or Noah or Samson or any of these guys, you know, they did something by faith. Okay, and so their sentences are written down. So we believe today that books of revelations are going to be opened and that God's going to have a sentence of our lives. Mm -hmm. This is what you've done for God. And so we want people to write that great testimony of their life. And we found biblically based steps, passion, you know, passion of the Christ, <laughs> you know, uh, a vision from God, knowing where he wants you to take where he wants to take your life and then faith to do. Mm -hmm. We've talked about faith already on tonight's program. So let's sort of go down the list in your life to try and encourage people to understand that even if you don't know these terms before you get in here in the studio and talk about it, you understand the concepts of what God does in the life of a believer, okay? Sure. So let's talk about how you found passion. So what we teach here on the show is that passion is knowing God's will. So for generally uh, when people's lives, they get born again, they get a thirst for the word, they start praying more. You've already talked about that once tonight. So what does it look like for you to start knowing who God is in your life? I think it's a number of different things. You mean just finding passion in your life through God and mm -hmm. getting to know God? Yeah, getting to the passion for God and the fact that, you know, he loves us so much that he gave his only son. And so for us, we also love God a lot. And that is a passion for us to, you know, put our will down and put his will above our own. And so a passion for God is really for us to know God's will in our own life, to run away from sin, to flee from sin and have these definite, you know, life changing moments begin to take place in your Christian walk. Before you can do what he has for you, you have to run away from some of the things that you were doing before he showed up. Sure, absolutely. So, uh, just what I, you know, encourage different people to or tell people. No, to talk do. about your life. You know, tell us like some of the issues that maybe uh, God's helped you come through and how you grew closer to Him. Okay, so um, I went through a lot of different struggles in my life, like anyone else has, sure. and so you know, it's it's for me, it's you know. In general, I'll just say I'm I'm not the perfect Christian. I still have struggles in my life, and I'm definitely not the per perfect Christian. But to me, it's really keeping keeping yourself grounded in faith and realizing that you know, no matter what you go through, whatever you go through in life, God is still there, no matter what. And it's really hard sometimes to really uh, know that, mm -hmm. but He is there, and so you have to just keep grounded in your faith, and you have to keep plugging along, and you have to keep you know, keep your faith and not never give up in life, you know, in your job and your faith and in a uh, family and friends, you have to keep going and don't stop. Is there some like specific steps that you take maybe personally, whether it's through prayer or spending time with believers or Bible reading or church going, like, what is it for you that really draws you closer? To me, it's definitely, um, I need to get better at it too, which obviously, you know, really going to church each Sunday because mm -hmm. I have been doing that. And then I get away from it because I get so busy, but definitely that's, I would definitely encourage that going to church on Sundays and going with friends yeah. or family members. I usually go with my good friend, Ann, who's my best friend. And I think that really helps. And again, what you said, being around positive, like-minded people who are going to push you because that's so important. You know, you push them and they push you. Absolutely. So it's, I think that's very, very important in life. I love church. In fact, when I first got born again, I didn't realize its importance. 
Mm-hmm. And I think for a lot of believers, well, and, and a lot of people who don't even know Christ, they look at church, and all they want is your money, or all they want us to do is show up on Easter Sunday and put some money right. in the bucket. It's like there's this you know worldly perspective of the church building, but the people inside the church are what make it up. And when you surround yourself with people who are on fire for Christ, it really transforms your life. You know, we hear a lot on this station because Dave Ramsey's on here. He talks about you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Mm-hmm. If you hang around with five broke people, you can be broke. If you hang around with five people who are excited for God, you're going to be excited for God. If you hang around with five successful people, likely to be successful in your life. And if you hang around negative <laughs> people, then they'll end up bringing you down. Exactly so right. Mm-hmm. So the church life, whether it's... Uh, for someone listening or for you, it's important to all of us. And I, I was one of these people who would just be like, I don't need church. I don't need church. And, you know, you don't realize the importance of it until you, you know, miss it a little bit or that you finally get in there. I remember the very first time I went inside church, they were all singing, the lights were off and everybody's got their hands in the air. And I was just so uncomfortable. You talk about you and, you know, you like to be this gypsy. I'm not. I like to be <laughs> at home. I like to be where I'm, where I'm normal and where, where I know where the stuff is and where I know what to expect. I had a fear, a tremendous anxiety about doing anything new before I found Christ. You know, going into a new building, talking to someone on the phone for the first time. Tremendous anxiety would would cripple me from doing things for the very first time. And you're the opposite of this in a way. But here we are both, you know, finding faith in God that allows us to get near other like-minded people. And doesn't mean that we have to be wanting to do the same things. Right. But we are doing the same thing in Christ. And to me, another big uh, point in my life was... um, Let's see, how should I put this? So this this person in my life, he's a, a six-year-old uh, man. He's not one of my friends, but he's someone who was in my life that I would see from time to time. And so this person, I would watch this person in his lifestyle. And mm-hmm. so this person, you know, is very materialistic and all mm-hmm. about himself. And, you know, he kind of mocks people of faith and doesn't, you know, he'll go to church here and there on, you know, just so he can show up on holidays and things like that. But For the most part, it's, you know, he's even, I've heard him say before that, you know, it's all about my cars. It's all about, you know, my, 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 my big house. It's all about my money. And, you know, that's what I want. And, you know, I have this, so I'm happy. But I looked at that and I'm just like, man, I'm just like, this person does not see the bigger picture. Because to me, you can have all the material items in the world. You could have all the shoes, the clothes, the, the fancy cars and the house and everything. But if you don't have loved ones, if you don't have people that love you and people that you love and those relationships, and if you don't have faith and you don't have God, I think you could have all the things in the world, but you're actually empty. Oh, for sure. I didn't know that what it was like to not have hope. And for me, I I don't, I wasn't as blessed as you've been able to describe as having a family who, you know, sort of raised you in faith and that you can now go with to church. You know, I have Mm -hmm. uh, my family members, some of them stopped talking to me after I found Jesus. So I have this different uh, description of my life, but what makes the body of Christ so good is that God uses so many of us for so many different things. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about the different things that God's using definitely Holly for. You're not going to want to miss, we're going to talk about her vision from God. We're going to talk about, uh, all the things she wants to encourage you to do in your walk with Christ. You're not going to want to miss the rest of this conversation. Don't go away. You're listening to the new John Simmons show, part of the testimony house network. Faithfully Fit and Wellness is St. Louis's all-new faith-based fitness program. Not only does Faithfully Fit want to see you shed pounds, but also wants to see you shed any other weight you've been carrying through Christ. Classes are filling up every morning during the week, so grab your spot in an individual class or an eight-week boot camp. Faithfully Fit offers classes in circuit training, drumstick fusion, cardio, and strength and personal training. Classes start at just 5 bucks, and the eight-week boot camp starts at 75 but wait, as a listener of the new John Simmons show, Faithfully Fit is offering you a buy one, get one free boot camp when you mention this ad when signing up. That's two camps for the price of one. You can bring a friend, split the cost, or have your second camp for free. Either way, this is a special offer only for show listeners. Sign up today by calling 314-239-4149 or visit faithfully.fit for more information. Faithfully Fit can also hold classes at your church or school. Don't delay. Contact Faithfully Fit, where they hope to strengthen your body and your relationship with Christ. Call 314-239-4149. Testimony House Ministries is the proud sponsor of the new John Simmons Show. We are so thankful for all of you who tune into the show, watch us live on Facebook, or on our YouTube channel. Without all of you, the new John Simmons Show and all the other Testimony House Network shows would not be possible. Please visit newjohnsimmons.com today. 
and click the Partner With Us tab to help us continue sharing our message of future and a hope through Christ with others. God bless. Hey, everybody. New John Simmons here with you. Back in 2012, I found myself at the end of my rope for what seemed like the hundredth time. I cried out to God and said, God, if you're real, I need you to show me a future and a hope for my life. What happened next changed my life forever. It took me out of my life where I was a gambling addict who had lost over $500,000, allowed me to begin a new life in Christ where I found more joy, peace, and hope than I ever knew existed. I share the stories, including where I blame God for my father's death and the call into ministry that I found in my first book called Finding Faith. I also share with you the answers to the questions that I was asking God about what is faith and how can I move mountains with it. Finding Faith has those stories and so much more. I absolutely believe it can encourage you to find faith in your life today. Finding Faith by me, the new John Simmons, is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble website, Walmart. You can also pick up a copy signed by me over at newjohnsimmons.com. Are you interested in learning more about finding God's sentence for your life? At newjohnsimmons.com, there are articles and videos describing how you can begin to write God's sentence for your life by finding passion, vision, and faith. In addition, newjohnsimmons.com has a variety of ways for you to be encouraged to continue writing God's sentence. As always, you can hear the show live weekdays at 9 p.m. Central Time by clicking the Listen Live button when you visit newjohnsimmons.com. Every topic is on the table here at WGNU 920 AM and 106.9 FM. Want to start writing or add to God's sentence for your life? Want to learn what that means? Visit NewJohnSimmons.com for articles and videos that can help you find a future and a hope for your life today. Now, back to the New John Simmons Show. Welcome back to the program, everybody. New John Simmons Show here each and every evening at 9 p.m., streaming live on Facebook as well. If you head over to newjohnsimmons.com, you can become a partner of the show. That's right. Uh, We want to be able to share this message of finding God's sentence for your life with so many people. We want to get on new radio stations. We want to be able to uh, improve our live stream and attract more viewers. And so you have the opportunity to do that over at newjohnsimmons.com. Just click the connect tab. You can be an advertiser of the show. If you have a Christian business or service that you're offering, or you're someone who just wants to support this ministry, it's a nonprofit ministry, being able to share the gospel of Christ each and every evening online, on your radio, everywhere where you can hear things. <laughs> That's where we're at. We're here tonight with uh, at definitely Holly, who's on Facebook herself at definitely Holly. And she's been here talking about her life in Christ and, her walk and where God's brought her and where he's going to take her to. I really like this idea of your show. In fact, uh, somebody's ch- chimed in here over on Facebook. They say, uh, definitely now a fan of definitely Holly. So you, uh, you, ah! you, you get the word twice. <laughs> it really does suit you. It seems like. <laughs> See, I'm telling you. I definitely. Fa- I found myself saying it more than I ever have <laughs> in one show before. And then whenever someone says the word definitely, they'll think, Holly. That's all Holly. right. Yeah, that's a <laughs> uh, Christian conservative NRA member. They're they're on board with you. So uh, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> very thankful. Jeff Adams <laughs> chimes in. Looking and sounding good, John. Thanks so much, Jeff. Appreciate you tuning in tonight. Uh, so many people watching and being excited to hear what you have to say tonight. So let's continue to encourage that's those people awesome. who have tuned in tonight. Uh, talking about your path with Christ. We talk about on the show all the time. God has a sentence for your life. Just means that God has a unique plan and purpose. Ephesians two ten says you have been created and designed. You are God's handiwork to do good works through Christ Jesus. And so for all of us, if you're a believer, our intention should be to live a good life through Christ and to be able to find out what good works are. If you just bring that down to its, you know, a foundational teaching to do good is to love God with all your heart and to love others as yourself. That's what Christ teaches in the gospel. And for you and your vision for what God has for you, what are you trying to do to do these two things? Love God and love others. Mm -hmm. Well, I think to me, it's just being the best person I can be, you know, always giving it my all just because I may not want to be at my full time job or I should say just because I don't see that as my 
as my actual, you know, final plan here, my vision, I'm still going to give right. it my all no matter what, because that's what God would want me to do. Yeah, it's called working in excellence. Exactly. And it's, it's just like when you pick up trash on the street, I didn't make that trash, but that's what God wants me to do. Exactly. So, you know, it's, it's being the best person you can be in and outside of work, you know, wherever you are. And it's, you know, treating others how you want to be treated. Absolutely. You, and that's really hard to me because I've, I've had some very, uh, <laughs> very uh, mean people in my life. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that that's very hard. And, you know, sometimes I would, you know, fight back or say something back to them. But now I, I'm better at it. I just learned to, you know, shake it off and just ignore it. Sure. Definitely Holly here in the studio on the new John Simmons show tonight, aspiring radio and podcast host. She's a former television reporter from an early age. She was doing this just wasn't covered by the camera yet. Uh, at the <laughs> at the mall, describing her little journal she was carrying yes. around with her. That's that's that, to me that's so exciting because it's just my wife knew from the time she was five years old that she was going to be a nurse, and I find it so incredibly uh, poignant for people who are trying to find God's plan for their life to realize that the gifts He's given us have been in our lives since we were little kids. It's the reason we have tendencies that we do. It's the worldview that we have. It's the reason we like to do certain things and not other things. And so for people, you know, sort of missing it, you know, just look at your life and what are the things that you've liked to do that maybe lends to what God has for you and his plan and his purpose. And for you as writing and was, you know, observing things, you're a motivational writer now and a speaker, yes. Jesus lover, you're writing about Jesus, you're wanting to talk about Jesus. So tell us more about, you know, what definitely Holly would look like. So definitely Holly is a mix of things, actually. Yeah. Definitely Holly, you know, it started off officially, um, as more fitness based, you know, God, God, faith and fitness, but now it's turned into something even more passionate. You know, I have God, I have faith, I have uh, fitness, health, nutrition. I have the second amendment, you know, I have uh, traveling. Mm -hmm. I consider myself a gypsy. I, I get up and go. I like to see new places, experience, explore. I like to meet new people, listen to their journeys and their stories. And I share mine. And it's just, it's a mix of all these things. And it's, again, it all comes down to the bottom line of struggling to find success and stepping out of comfort zone. Yeah. So tell us what, uh, give us an experience that you've had with that, where you've had to step out in, outside of a comfort sure. zone. Sure. So probably one of my uh, biggest uh, things that I've done that I'm very proud of myself for is I graduated with my master's from uh, Linwood University. Wow. Congratulations. And thank you. And then after that, my As mom. As a college dropout, I salute you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, my mom told me, she's like, you know, you worked for everything. You know, I didn't have any help in college. I wow. did it all myself. And so, yes. Yeah, so she said, you know, I'm going to send you. Obviously, I'm a traveler. So she said, just pick anywhere you want to go and I'm going to send you and a friend there. Well, I surprised her because I said, mom, I don't want to go with a friend. I want to go by myself. So I went to the Dominican Republic. I had never been there before. Mm -hmm. And I, I have a minor in Spanish. So I speak a little, I'm pretty good at Spanish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Un <biquito. Yeah. laughs> but uh, I surprised her. I'm like, you know, Puna, Puna Cana. You know, I want to go there. And she's like, you want to go there by yourself? I said, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mm -hmm. want to go there. I've never been there. Sure. So she, um, we planned for me to go to this uh, all-exclusive resort. So mm -hmm. I went there. I stayed there about five days, and the other five days I went off the resort, and I took a taxi four hours away to <laughs> Excuse me? Santo Domingo, the capital. That's not where you told your mom where you were going to be. <laughs> My mom would be so upset with me. She called the police on me once because I was on a street over from the street I was supposed to be on. <laughs> she, she was, uh, once I told her afterwards, she was like, oh my gosh, she freaked out a little bit, but yeah, she, she got over it then, and she mm -hmm. was like, wow, you know takes a lot of courage to do that. I'm like, yeah, I just, I wanted to explore. And so I did, I went to Santo Domingo and I did some backpacking there. Wow. And I saw the city there and then I went back to the resort. <laughs> Out of your comfort zone. Indeed. Do you, do you find yourself growing closer to Christ simply because you're away from home in this moment? Or do you find yourself uh, just looking at nature or whatever it is? Like what for you is it that drew you to Christ in that experience? Uh, I just have to say, you know, relying on him yeah. and, you know, because I, I didn't, again, I didn't know I'm all the way across the world almost, you know, I don't know anyone by there yourself. And, that is an by incredible. Myself and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so absolutely. <laughs> so you've, you've gone places, you write things and then yes. you want to talk about them. Uh, what is it about your life that can really help other people, uh, find themselves closer to the Lord or find themselves stepping out of their own comfort zone? Okay. 
I would definitely have to say that, you know, like I said earlier in the show, I myself am, am not the perfect Christian. No one is going to be perfect. Sure. And if you're, if you're like a writer, if you're, you know, a, a motivator, a motiva motivational speaker, and you're saying, you know, oh, everything's great. Everything's great. You know, everything's going to be fine. Well, I'm more of a realist. And I realize that, you know, no, things are going to happen in your life and not everything is going to be fine 100 percent of the time. But again, you have to have that faith in order to get through those times in your life. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, people relate to that because people don't want to follow someone that just says everything's going to be fine. And it's just, uh, you know, this obviously like, oh, you know, even though this and this happens, don't worry about it. It's fine. People want someone that they're going to be able to relate to and going through their own struggles. But at the same time, have that common mindset where no matter what, God is going to be there. You've talked about faith an awful lot tonight. It's one of our steps that we teach here on the show, being able to do God's will. To, you know, First, you have to know God's will, and then you have to do God's will. If you don't have a vision from God, if you don't have a plan and purpose for your life, if you want to do God's will, all you got to do is read the book. The book shows us how to, how to live with faith, You know, how to love other people. As Holly's talked about how difficult it can be, if, especially if you have a bunch of negative Nancys or you know, cheerleaders from hell around your life trying to you know, ruin your path or ruin your point of view, ruin your experiences. And so for us, being able to walk with faith is to have hope in an unknown future. Absolutely. And so for you, how do you encourage people to have hope in situations that we haven't seen yet when we've only experienced, you know, despair? Right. And I think that's a very difficult part in, um, in the, just in everyone's journey. It's just, it's keeping that faith, but having that hope, like you just said, because, you know, you have this unknown future and it's, it's scary because. I'm I'm a I'm type of person who I I'm very organized. I like to have everything detailed mm -hmm. and planned out. And to me, that's very hard for myself because I'm as a like, gypsy, I'm sure that that's very anti against what your nature is. <laughs> it is, but again, <laughs> at the same time, when it comes down to like planning mm -hmm. out things, I like to have things written down. Yeah. Whereas you know, if I'm traveling, I'll just get up and go. But when it comes to actual set plans, you know, and what I'm going to do in the future, I like having those concrete. Yeah. And so that's very hard for me to get over that in that aspect, just just realizing that, you know, just you have to hold on to that hope and realize that you don't know what's going to happen in your future, but God already does. So it, you have to do everything you can do. You have to, you know, reach out to different people, make those connections, be the best person you can be, get yourself out there. But then you have to realize you can only do so much because the rest is God. It really is. That's an, <laughs> I like this idea that you brought up, get around other people, because it's so important, not just to go to church and be around other believers, but to get yourself around people who are going places. Yes. It's so important for anybody who's trying to find God's plan for their Absolutely. life. That if you're searching for it by yourself, you, you're going to miss targets that you don't even know exist, because the people around you are going to help encourage you, help uh, lift you up. You know, because it is hard. Life is hard. You've mentioned it many times on tonight's show. That, you know, we go on the struggle bus and we're trying to get off of it and we're keep pulling the lever and like, stop this bus. I want to get off of it. Right. <laughs> but for us, it's it's having faith in God that he's driving the bus, even if it's a tough time. Mm -hmm. What are you feeling like it's going on in your life where you're able to uh, maneuver that storm a little bit? OK, so what do you mean? Like so if you're walking in faith and you and you have mm -hmm. this unknown future, you're trying to do definitely Holly. And how do you not just give up and how do you just continue to pursue over and over again and wake up and say, this is what I want to do? You know, it's hard because I do have some people, just some that, you know, say, oh, you know, that's great. That's more of like a play thing or, you know, like, oh, that's just in your spare time here sure. and there. You know, that that's great. Like do that, like inspire others. But again, getting that concrete job and keep plugging away in the corporate office, mm -hmm, and, you know, mm -hmm. what you're doing. And, you know, I just, I can't listen to those people. You know, I'll just, I take it very lightly. I'm just like, okay, thanks. But yeah. I do have a lot of people in my life at the same time who definitely support me and, you know, encourage me to keep going. And I have a lot of friends who, you know, when I, when I was at the NRA annual meetings, I got to go into the NRA TV and speak live on NRA TV. And I've had so many people share that footage and just, I see all these people believing in me. So I think that's very important too. You know, tell your, tell your friends, tell your family mem members and whatever they're doing in their life. Hey, you know, I, I believe in you. I support you. And so who is it that you are like clinging to, or maybe people that are influencing your life right now to help you, you know, get towards a finish line? Sure. So um, I would have to say one of the main people um, no longer in my life, but one of my main um, 
influencers and a role model was my grandma Ann. Mm-hmm. And that's why on my Facebook, on my personal Facebook, you'll see Holly Ann. But uh, yes, that was, she was definitely my my role model in my life. And, um, you know, my, my parents got divorced. So she was the one that was there for me, you know, helping to raise me and just yeah. always been that rock. And she showed me actually, um, along with my parents, but it was, it was her as well who showed me who, who God is and yeah. what, what being a person of Christ really looks like, because I've never seen such a person with a, a selfless nature like her. We're here with definitely Holly here on the new John Simmons show, wrapping up the program. I want to let everybody know that if you want to contact uh, Holly, it's easy to do at definitely Holly on Facebook and Instagram. Holly, will yes. you let everybody know how they can read some of your writings or watch that NRA video? Sure. So again, um, you can go to definitely Holly.wordpress.com. I have uh, my blog there and my different writings there. Yeah, I encourage everyone to go to definitely Holly on Facebook where you can watch my uh, live footage from the NRA TV along with other footage that I've done. Also go check out my Instagram, definitely Holly. A lot of places to go catch her. Hopefully we can catch her on a radio or a, a podcast in her near future. I'd love to help you get at Definitely Holly, get launched and into the yes. stratosphere. So looking forward to keeping a conversation going with you. And for all of you who have been listening tonight, we want to thank you for tuning into the show tonight. I want to thank you for being on the show with me tonight. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure for all of us. And I want to include, I want to encourage all of you to head over to Apple iTunes or Google Play. Download the podcast, subscribe to the show, find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Do something uh, to allow your friends or your neighbors know that we're encouraging people every single night to find God's sentence for their life. And as always, guys, want to encourage you to find Christ in your life and allow you to confess that he is Lord and that he has a plan for your life. And if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. I want to thank Mr. Curtis behind the board tonight for helping us out. And I want to thank all of you for watching on Facebook and on your radio, guys. Until next time, we pray you discover a future and a hope for your life today. Thanks for listening to the new John Simmons Show, part of the Testimony House Network. To replay this episode or listen to past episodes, look for the new John Simmons Show podcast on your mobile device. Stay connected to the show. Read the latest news, blog posts, and see behind-the-scenes photos by following at New John Simmons on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you would like to learn more about how you can begin to write God's sentence for your life, or join a growing community of people who are finding passion, vision, and faith for their lives, please visit NewJohnSimmons.com. Until next time, we pray you discover a future and a hope for your life today.